Great, right, it's you in half an hour. Thanks. Okay, so welcome back. I'm Luca Tagliapozzi, I'm sharing this session. And uh, we had Guillermo Lang, almost uh, local from Turkey, uh, who talked about mathematical state, magic, and anticipation. Thank you, Luca. Thank you, Luca, and for inviting me. Uh, yes, so this is the title of my talk. And these are the people that contributed to this talk. So uh, me and Tobias Haug, Jacopo, the artist, and Jack Keshe. And the content of these uh, slides comes from these two uh, preprints <laughs> we published. And uh, so we start from the very beginning. So from Matrix for that state that probably you know very well because they are kind of uh, very famous and are prototypical entangled many body states, very used. And uh, they have nice property. You can prove they, they represent ground state in 1D. But, and uh, also they are extremely useful for numerics in practice, DMRG, TBD, and so on. And also, as we learned from uh, Georgos, are very easy to generate in lab in uh, digital quantum platforms. So they are very important. And uh, the point is that it come out, it, it come out that many statistical properties of MPS are somehow not well explored. Where statistical properties means what you should expect from uh, a general typical MPS somehow. And okay, I mean, this uh, slides I will often use this uh, graphical language of, for tensor. So an MPS is uh, like a tensor train like this, where each these boxes are. Uh, uh, three uh, rank tensors with uh, the bond dimension of this link represented by chi, and we often consider a generic uh, local physical dimension uh, as module. Okay, so these are NPS in general. Then, uh, as I mentioned, we are interested in statistical properties, so we should assign a probability measure to each tensor, and uh, for practical purposes, it's, it's uh, useful to introduce this uh, way of doing it. So in practice, you take uh, each MPS tensor to be a, a sub-block of a unitary R matrix. And this is a, uh, can, can seem a bit arbitrary, but it's very useful in practice, also because it guaranteed a, a right normalization, for instance, of the MPS, for which, for people that are familiar with this, in practice, Granted, the normalization, overall normalization of the state. And so these are unitary of dimension D chi. And uh, okay, this model has been studied previously, introduced by Zanardi and collaborators, and also studied in, in other works. Um, okay, so the overall random NPS is an object like this. And the general question we are going to explore are the following. So our ergodic, ergodic is this ensemble. That means uh, how well does it approximate any generic many body state, particularly when you scale the one dimension with the system size n. And also which amount of quantum resources in general you should expect from such random NPS. So these are the kind of questions I will try to address. Okay, here again is a motivational slide. So I already mentioned the uh, efficient preparation via measurement and feedback of MPS. So a uh, random MPS can be generated in lab quite easily. And uh, also we'll briefly mention uh, another work by uh, Jacopo and students uh, in which we, in practice, in practice we find, found a quite nice connection between uh, MPS, random MPS and uh, the entanglement transition. <laughs> okay, now we start with the first work where we addressed uh, uh, basically uh, the um, non stabilizerness properties of such MPS. First of all, let me introduce what is non stabilizerness. I will be quite brief because Lorenz already uh, introduced a bit this notion. So, stabilizer states are basically states generated by. Clifford operation from the reference state 000. And uh, 
stabilizer state are uh, efficiently simulable, sim can efficiently simulate it on a classical computer. And uh, also, more, more importantly, can be um, quite uh, easily uh, generated in lab because Clifford operations are basically compatible with quantum error correction. So that's why people introduce a notion of non stabilizerness but it's also what you need to uh, have uh, uh, quantum universality. And uh, so this notion is related to the fact that in practice, in practice, non Clifford gates are often uh, difficult to implement in practice. So are, are a quantum resource, something difficult to, to, to create, to generate. And uh, so uh, that's why people, in particular from his seminal paper by uh, Bradley and Kitayev started to use this word quantum magic. So quantum magic is essentially the amount of non clifford resources you need to prepare your state. And here in particular, we will use this uh, uh, nice uh, uh, measure that has, has been introduced by Lorenzo some years back and that are the stabilizer Rennie entropies. And for people that are not familiar with this, it's just a, basically a participation entropy in the space of Pauli strings. So for me, this sigma represents uh, every possible string of Pauli matrices over the n qubits, q dits in general. And uh, yeah, if you have qubits, you should consider the generalization of the Pauli matrices. In uh, if you have qubits, uh, just the usual Pauli matrices. This large D is the overall uh, in the space dimension. Okay. So um, as I told you, we are interested in random NTS. So the first we think we ask is what is the average value of the magic of non stabilizerness of the, the random NTS. And um, uh, how it scale with the one dimension type. So uh, now there is a few technical uh, facts. So um, as you see here, we have uh, this expectation value to the power 2n. So in practice, in the graphical language, we have 2n copies of this uh, uh, sandwich between psi and psi uh, conjugate. And uh, we have this average over the local unitary R and also this sum over the four possible Pauli matrices. <clears throat> we are now in uh, local dimension two, so qubits. And we ask how to compute this stuff. So uh, the, the, the tool we use, it's the Weingarten calculus that is just uh, basically this formula. So a way of computing averages over the R group of K copies of uh, an unitary, R distributed unitary and its conjugate. And the main uh, equation is this one, where this T represents the permutation of operator over the K replicas of the, of the system. And in, in, in our case, in our case, K is basically 2N because we have 2N copies of the, of the state. And uh, so these uh, wavy lines are the, basically the permutation of the uh, index. <clears throat> OK, so this is the main tool we use. And what, it, uh, you, what you get if you perform this average over each local unitary, uh, R unitary, it's something like this. So you get uh, basically an MPS in the uh, replica permutation space, uh, where each of these transfer matrices contains uh, some, some over the local Pauli operators. And uh, basically, you just have to contract this uh, um, train of transfer matrices. And there is a, a technical fact that, uh, that is the following. So there is a, a small difference between PBC and OBC. So if you use uh, periodic boundary condition or open uh, boundary condition, you get slightly different results particularly when you are interested in um, a regime where n and uh, where chi scales um, from, um, somehow with that. <coughs> in particular, it turns out that OBC are kind of better because they correspond to um, Q 
So random NPS generated with OBC corresponds to um, this kind of circuit. So they are uh, they give properly normalized NPS. <laughs> and so whereas PVC uh, don't give properly normalized state. So the results I'm going to show are done with OBC and are kind of more reliable. And these are our results. So uh, what I'm going to show is this delta n chi, that is basically the deviation um, from, uh, of the random NPS magic from the magic of generic R states. So it's this uh, um, difference, basically. And so you are interested in knowing how the magic of uh, gen uh, random NPS, generic NPS, approach the magic of generic car states. So how this delta goes down, basically. <clears throat> and what we found, basically, analytically, is that uh, for a small index, uh, for, for a small n equal to two, so for the second Rennie entropy, basically, it goes down as n over chi squared. And for a small index, for small n equal to three, it goes down as n over chi cube. And this is also illustrated here. And this is particularly important because what is telling you is <coughs> that MPS with the small bond dimension, particularly polynomial in n, in n, can pretty much store the same amount of magic R as generic R states. And so they are practically uh, as magic as generic uh, R states. This can be understood also as follows. It's a pretty, pretty much a qualitative uh, argument, but it's, I think, interesting. So if you have a standard brick wall circuit, so uh, as I told you before, MPS can be constructed with a kind of staircase circuit. But just let's just imagine to have a standard brick wall time evolution. And uh, if you contract the network uh, up to time t, um, you get uh, basically, okay, this is wrong. You get, uh, um, uh, yeah, so if you contract uh, up to time t, you get uh, an MPS of one dimension x p, p, because the, uh, the cost of contracting the network up to time t is exponential in t, of course. So you have this uh, kind of uh, qualitative equality. And indeed, uh, what is telling you this is that uh, our result is telling you that basically the magic saturate the time uh, log n. And this, indeed, this was found also, was proven also in another setting, in particular in this brick wall, uh, brick wall structure, in this work by Jack and others. <clears throat> so this is kind of compatible with our results. Okay, so this is basically one interesting stuff about uh, typical MPS, so, yes. Could you, uh, could you comment, why do you look at MPS and magic together in the following sense? I can have product states, and product states can also carry magic. Yes, so why do I need to look at entangled states? Too? Uh, because uh, um, product state, uh, uh, generic product state have uh, extensive magic, but not maximum magic. So they have not the same magic of uh, our states. So entanglement matters for, creating ma magic. So with zero entanglement, you cannot have maximum magic. You can have extensive magic, but not maximum. Mm -hmm. So the coefficient uh, of the extensivity is different. It grows with chi. Thanks. Uh, OK, so, so here are a couple of benchmarks of our results. Uh, um, <clears throat> for instance, uh, OK, let me mention the second one, maybe it's more, more nice. Uh, that is actually uh, found in a completely different setting. Uh, comes from this work, um, Marcello da Monte and collaborator. And we found pretty much the same scaling with the one dimension in a completely different setting. So not, uh, uh, not random MPS at all, but still MPS. And we found the same scaling of the magic with the one dimension. And, uh, Motivated by this, we introduced uh, something we call Clifford and Nance MPS. Let me explain this. So we, we saw that uh, MPS 
with a small bond dimension or bond dimension polynomial in the system size. So something you, is feasible let's say, in classical computers can store the same magic of uh, uh, generic car states. On the other hand, Clifford unitaries that are somehow uh, can be treated and, um, computationally in a classical computer can generate as an uh, old entanglement uh, unit in practice. It can generate uh, volume low entanglement. So what we introduced is the following ensemble that is made by a MPS with small bond dimension, let's say, or polynomial in n bond dimension, followed by a Clifford unitary. So this gives all the, all the magic of uh, uh, R states, and this gives all the entanglement. And what this is interesting, because, uh, okay, first of all, let me mention this, the practical relevance, because these Clifford MPS are um, extremely entangled, possible volume law entangled, but still they are somehow, um, you can do something uh, computationally with it. Uh, in particular, you can compute uh, expectation values over them. Why? Because you know how the Clifford acts on uh, any observable, any Pauli strings. It just uh, map a Pauli string to another Pauli strings. And then well, what you have to do is just computing these Pauli strings uh, um, expectation value over a, a small dimension, small bond dimension MPS. <coughs> so Clifford and Hans MPS are a class of states that have all the magic uh, of our states, all the entanglement of our states, but still are somehow classical simulatable, uh, at least for, from this point of view. So you can compute expectation value. And also there are, <coughs> Nice algorithm that are uh, being studied uh, uh, in recent months that came out uh, to uh, actually use this uh, Clifford Nantz MPS in, practic in practical uh, numerical algorithms and to study, for instance, DMR um, graph state, time evolution, and uh, also circuits with measurements. And uh, here I mentioned two papers, uh, but I think Mario uh, Collural uh, tomorrow will speak uh, more about this kind of algorithm. Huh? And uh, okay, now that you know the practical relevance of this ensemble, let me mention that still in our work, we can we uh, kind of pro proven the, the fact that um, <laughs> Clifford and Hans MPS are uh, basically approximate uh, uh, for design. Um, so basically, that means that if you consider this uh, frame potential, that is basically the distance in order to of the K replica density matrix from that of R states, you can uh, reduce the distance, uh, this distance uh, arbitrarily by increasing the bond dimension. And uh, particularly with uh, bond dimension that is again, just polynomial in the system size. So you can get basically approximate for design. Um, Okay, so now I will move to another aspect of this. Uh, yes, and the, the random matrix for the states are uh, approximate to designs or to designs. No, Clifford and Hans random matrix Clifford, just uh, with Clifford. Yeah, and the random matrix for the states. Uh, I I will move on this. I uh, will discuss later. Okay. So now we move on, on another aspect to prove somehow the ergodicity of random MPS. So previously we. Uh, look at the magic, that is a, a property. Now we move to something else, particularly to this anti-concentration. So uh, again, the stabilizer and the entropy we considered before are just basically um, something that measure the delocalization of the wave function in the Pauli basis, because uh, kind of any entropies in the Pauli basis. You can consider the same thing in the computational basis. And these are known as EPR. Yeah, inverse participation ratio are well studied uh, um, in um, many body physics. <clears throat> and so we look at this, the inverse participation ratio over the computational basis. Let's tell you how anti-concentrated the uh, NPS is in the computational basis. And particularly, so we, per we compute the average of this EPR over the ensemble of uh, random NPS. 
you can also define uh, um, a probability distribution that is basically the probability distribution of uh, uh, the overlap between uh, an MPS, a random MPS, and a um, state in the computational basis. And uh, the, the moments of this probability distribution are basically are the EPR. And uh, so we also look at this, as I will show you. And what we know is that for our states, this distribution is just an exponential, uh, an exponential distribution, also called Porter Thomas <laughs> distribution. Okay, so we have uh, some results. The first one is that basically for random MPS, we uh, can compute analytically uh, the EPR at any order K, and we get this formula. It's exact, so you can compute everything. And this is because the uh, like network you get in the replica space is particularly simple, and you can contract it uh, exactly. And uh, so this is the formula. And but let me mention, uh, okay, that, this is the plot of this formula. <laughs> so this is the plot of this formula. It's basically the division between the the. It's basically how the. EPR of random MPS deviates from the uh, EPR of uh, random R states. And as you can see uh, in this log log plot, uh, you can see that the correction to R's that are represented by this delta I basically goes down as N over chi that is represented by this dotted line. So this is a, um, this is a, a, like a symptotic regime of this formula. And uh, that means that MPS with one dimension that is just linear in the system size, basically, uh, are fully anti-concentrated in the computational basis because this uh, um, delta basically goes down as n over chi. So these are first uh, uh, results we get. And uh, also, um, there is a nice uh, uh, way and uh, nice structure that emerged if you take this scaling limit where both n and chi goes to infinity, but with fixed ratio, chi over n, that we basically call gamma. And uh, what emerges is that the, these moments, this EPR, basically factorized in a part that is the R moment, and uh, another part that is basically the moments of a log normal distributed um, <laughs> variable. That's why in this regime, we were able to resum these moments and find the um, exact um, overlaps distribution. Um, that is as this formula. And it's somehow something that interpolates between um, the, something that tell you how the overlaps distribution approach the Porter Thomas, Porter -Thomas distribution. Here is represented by this dotted line. Maybe it's better with this slide. So the black line represents uh, the probability distribution we got uh, by analytical calculations for different gammas, while the uh, blue histogram is just an histogram obtained by uh, sampling a random realization of MPS. And as you can see, you, we find a pretty good agree agreement even for very small gamma, it is a bit surprising because in uh, deriving this formula, we use the fact that chi is uh, also going to infinity, while if you take uh, gamma small, it's, uh, uh, this is not uh, anymore true in practice, but still uh, our analytical predictions seem, seem to hold. And as you can see, uh, this uh, distribution, this overlap distribution, uh, tell you how the overlap distribution goes to the Porter Thomas. And you get the Porter Thomas for large gamma. Okay. Still in this work, we can also consider another probe for the ergodicity, let's say, of the ensemble, that is the frame potential. And frame potential is just, uh, as mentioned before, this object 
and uh, it's uh, again basically measure the distance in order to from the k replica uh, of the k replica density matrices. And uh, in this case, the transfer matrix is much more complicated. Why, that's why we couldn't uh, find an exact formula or an exact result. But still, we are, were able to perform numerical uh, calculation in the replica space. Mean, that means that they are basically almost exact calculation in the sense that you could explore basically any value of chi. And what we got is basically something very similar to the EPR. So again, there is a, um, a scaling, but um, basically the difference delta F, delta F is basically the difference between the frame potential and the frame potential of R, and basically it go down as N over chi squared this time, instead of N over chi, N over chi squared. But basically the, the plot is very similar. And uh, here there is a, a function that depends on the replica K and the also the uh, local dimension D. And this, this, uh, this result is particularly nice also because uh, it allows you to basically extrapolate uh, the same uh, overlap distribution uh, just in another scaling limit. So before we had the gamma equal to n over chi, this time gamma will be n over chi square, but basically it's the same. And it did again by just uh, uh, experimentally, let's say, by sampling random NPS, we found again the analytical uh, prediction we had for the overlap distribution, these two plots uh, below. <clears throat> Okay, uh, uh, a final thing I want to mention is that uh, this, this fact is pretty intuitive because uh, if, you <laughs> <laughs> if you look at uh, uh, how the EPR and the frame potential are defined, you see that the EPR have, uh, are defined like this. So you have uh, like a unitary time evolution where P is uh, pretty much log chi. In the frame potential, you have two unitaries. So you have uh, like a kind of time evolution for time 2t, that means log chi square. That's why we got the chi square instead of chi. This is kind of intuitive argument to see this. Uh, okay, so to summarize our results for random NPS, so we got many, many exact results because the random NPS are a kind of nice, exactly solvable model for chaotic many body states. And here are some of the results we got. So first of all, <coughs> random NPS with chi polynomial in N are fully magic, means have the same magic of our states. Second, they are fully anti-concentrated in the computational basis. So if you look at EPR, they look basically as the Porter-Thomas uh, uh, distribution uh, tell us. And, uh, also, they are epsilon approximate k design, with this epsilon being polynomially small in n. And uh, again, we also were able to derive an exact uh, formula for the overlap distribution, and uh, that basically flow to the Porter Thomas distribution for large gamma. And also, this tells you that uh, basically, when taking chi of order polynomial in n, you get the Porter Thomas. And this is pretty much uh, how it works. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe somewhat abstract, but uh, do we really gain anything by thinking about parent Hamiltonians of random NPS and what sort of this induces in the space of parent Hamiltonians? Uh, I don't know. It's uh, something I didn't think about. But yes, of course. Uh, that means you get random parent Hamiltonian. Uh, I, I, could, I didn't think about it, but maybe yes. Uh, I don't know. Yes. Uh, I think it's somewhat related thank you, Alisa, very good point. <coughs> because I was wondering uh, why this, I mean, can you give me the argument of why I should think about random MPSS model of quantum anybody uh, else? 
Okay, first of all, because uh, as I mentioned here on other slides, pretty, uh, our results are pretty much consistent with what you also get from a, a unitary uh, standard time evolution like with brick wall. And uh, also MPS are basically, uh, are basically uh, many body states uh, or uh, like ground states of uh, Hamiltonians. So I think it's a uh, pretty much, uh, I mean, the results are consistent. So, so what you get with the standard big wall star structure. So but, no, but it would be super nice to see the, his question, I mean, the only planet Hamiltonians, what is the, yeah. I, this, I, this I don't know. Like, oh, oh, yeah, because from a technical point of view, I don't know if it's simple because you get a, a probability for the random parent Hamiltonian, I don't know if it's many. Something maybe yes. Uh, what, what is the shape of the function f of d and k in the ah uh, in the free potential case? Yeah. Uh, this uh, we couldn't derive analytically because, uh, as I mentioned, in this case the free potential is not exactly uh, analytically uh, computable. But we fit it uh, by with the like this. Um, that we obtained by numerical contraction, mm -hmm. and we have some expression that is basically the same we got for the um, EPR, but for small corrections. That's why we also get the same uh, probability overlap probability distribution. Mm -hmm. But for k equals one, it's zero. No? For k, well, no matter as well, the states are one design, exactly one design. Yes, and and not two design. Not to design exactly this. Not exactly. Not exactly to design. Okay. <clears throat> Let's say you could label it. 